Sammy Certified 25 Creedmoor is new for 2025, and that means it's time for an awesome 25 Creedmoor build. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I like 25 Creedmoor so much, I thought it was time for another build. We're gonna have a lot of great content coming up, starting with this build. Let me get straight into what we're gonna be using. So, the heart of the action is going to be the 1934 Armory BE-1 action. This thing is packed with value. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But before that, let's cover the rest of the componentry here. Custom Rifle Barrels Super Heavy Contour 1 and 7 and a half Twist 257 Barrel Blank. We chambered up a 7 Swick on this channel. That was an absolute hammer. Let me show you that. So, custom rifle barrels was an easy choice for this project. 1934 Armory also sent us this really amazing action wrench. I think literally this is probably the nicest action wrench that I've seen from any action manufacturer. It's going to help us put things together. I've got a reamer from JGS. I've got go and no-go gauges from Manson and Forster respectively. We're going to use uh, Bixen anti tax Sport Pro X trigger from Bullet Central. Absolutely love that trigger. And then the tried and the true Genesis 2 Micarta stock from Foundation. This has been in some of our best builds. I absolutely love the look. I love the feel. It's got this precision inlet uh, so that we don't have to bed the action. They just fit absolutely perfect. We've also got another mainstay in our precision rifle builds, and that's the M5 DBM from Hawkins Precision. Fits perfectly, works perfectly, and then we can use various AICS magazines for the build, which is awesome. So let's talk about 25 Creedmoor real briefly. At the SHOT Show this year in January 2025, that was part of the big news at the show was 25 Creedmoor is now Sammy certified. What does that really mean? 25 Creedmoor has been around for a while. Well, now it means that we have official specs to go by guidelines, ballistics, and then of course we're going to gain attached from rifle manufacturers, component manufacturers, we're going to have better load data, and all the rest. So this is great. And 25 Creedmoor really fits between the 6mm Creedmoor and the 6.5 Creedmoor. There are various trade-offs including your wind bucking, capability, your recoil, your barrel life, and 25 is considered by many to be that sweet spot right between the 6 and the 6.5. Uh, Sammy specifies a 1 and 7.5 and twist rate for the barrel, which is what we've got here. It's a little bit different than the 1 and 8 twist recommendation for 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, but there are a lot of great bullets that we can now pick from and more hitting the market each year, which is awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the BE-1 action. This comes in probably the nicest packaging I've seen from a rifle action manufacturer. So we've already got great points for the case and also the action wrench. The action wrench is available separately. So here we go, we have a high density foam interior, really nice quality. Here's the action, super, super nice. And then the bolt, really attractive. Remington 700 clone. Let's uh, walk through some of the features and specs here. So the price is $999.99. We are just barely under a thousand bucks, which is a great price point given the features. Uh, it's got a 62 thou firing pin, so it's gonna work really well with small rifle primers. It's got an external bolt stop. Uh, 308 and Magnum bolt faces are available. Uh, it's got Remington 700 trigger hanger, PVD coating, that's the physical vapor deposition coating that helps with corrosion and also lowers the friction coefficient. You'll notice there's a couple set screws here. So there is a quick change option. If you look at the user's manual for the BE-1, there's two different tenon prints, one for a conventional torqued on barrel and one for a quick change barrel. 
where you can basically use these set screws to secure the barrel in place and not have to use a barrel vise and an action wrench, which is really nice. You might still want the action wrench. Uh, to be honest, I haven't played with the quick change barrels because I'm very used to using a barrel vise and an action wrench, uh, but it is nice to have that option. It's got a 0.3 inch integral recoil lug. This is mega, right? Very, very stiff. And the fact that it's integral makes uh, swapping barrels easier. You don't have to have a special locating jig, you know, for your recoil lug or pins to deal with or anything like that. We've got a one piece bolt with spiral fluting. So it's gonna be really nice and rigid. The spiral fluting gets the weight down just a touch, helps keep dirt and debris out of the way, that kind of thing. Wire EDM rest raceway, which is pretty much standard on the really high quality actions. And you know, the Remington 700 trigger hanger means that we're gonna have a lot of great options when it comes to triggers like the TaxSport Pro X that we've selected here. Okay, so that's the high level overview of the BE-1. I'm gonna do some research and take things over to the lathe and get to chambering this barrel. So here it is, the barrel is done and it's installed in the receiver. I even put the rifle together. Let me walk this through with you step by step. So I decided to use the Precision Matthews PM1440 HVT2. We use this lathe all the time for chambering jobs because it's a 1440, it's made in Taiwan, it has the variable speed, it's extra stout, it's uh, the heavier model that we have in the 1440 lineup. Really, really great gunsmithing lathe. So for the breech end, I installed the barrel in the lathe. I got it running perfectly true on both ends and then sent the pre-drill through. This removes the bulk of the chamber material. And then after that, we indicate the throat area, right where the bullet's gonna engage the rifling down to one ten thousandth of an inch. The CRB barrel blank, really, really nice, really consistent. So after that, board the uh, pre-drill chamber area true with single point boring bar. This is so that our reamer will land on a perfectly concentric surface. And we can therefore minimize run out. Turned the tenon, threaded the tenon, didn't have to do any clocking or anything like that because when the barrel was indicated, it was still running perfectly true. No counter bore for this particular BE1 tenon print, which is great. That saves us a little bit of time and in my opinion, isn't necessary. So then it was time to run in the chambering reamer and what I do for this is I ream up to about 30 thousandths, 25 thousandths to go, and then slip over a, a ring and take a depth micrometer reading to see how far we're gonna need to go. And what was cool about this job, I hit it the first time dead on. Uh, threaded the action onto the barrel on the lathe, checked with my go and no-go gauges, everything was great. So after that, I flipped the barrel around, turned down the tenon, did my standard 5 8 by 24 muzzle threading job, put on a flat recessed crown, and then took the barrel out of the lathe. That means we're basically done with the machining. Then I had to decide on the finish. So we could do polished, we could do Cerakote, we could do bead blasted. Lately, I've been really liking the bead blasting finish. Uh, so I put it in the bead blaster, I did that real quick, and then uh, proceeded to clean it up, blow it out, ran a patch through it, and then it was time to torque down the barrel to the action and we do one more final headspace check, right? This time everything landed exactly where we wanted it to. The go gauge went, the no gauge did not go, right? So go goes, no go, no goes, and everybody's happy. So then we took the barreled action and put it into this Genesis 2 stock from Foundation with the Hawkins DBM bottom metal, everything went together great and here it is ready to install a scope with all that it's time to get the scope onto the rifle and for this project we have telson target master 5 to 25 by 56 very much looking forward to trying out this scope i've got some xlr 34 millimeter rings and we're going to use the arrow products precision scope leveling mount the way that this is going to work is we're going to get the rings on the pick rail on the rifle, 
We're gonna get the scope in there all loose and then just check for proper eye relief. Then we'll take the rifle, uh, swap it for the precision scope leveling mount and then use that. We'll level the base and then I think for this one with the base level, I'm gonna use some wedges to just uh, basically use this bottom surface to make the scope body level with the scope leveling tool. All should be good. Let's get to this. Okay, so our scope is mounted and I actually decided to use a parallel off the bottom of the scope and a precision level instead of wedges just so that we could utilize the, the true advantage of using the scope leveling mount. Okay, so with the scope on, last thing I need to do before I go to the range is add a muzzle brake. So I'm gonna do that and we'll see you at the range. The Area 419 Hellfire brake topped off the package the excitement at this point is building, right? I can't wait to get this up to the 100 yard range and get it sighted in. So I took out the bolt, put it on the bench rest, looked straight down the bore, got centered up on my paper. And the first shot landed about two and a half inches, a little bit low and, and to the left. And the load that I'm working with here is the load that I had worked up previously, 131 grain blackjack bullets. Peterson brass with the small rifle primer and what was this? 42.6 grains of Hodgdon H4350 shot like a laser in the last rifle. Let me show you how it shot with this rifle. So there it is, the first three shot group, 0.237 inches, that's sub-quarter MOA. Yes, it's a three shot group, but this is what I do to sight in a rifle. I raised uh, the elevation a couple clicks, and uh, I'm happy to announce that we've got more 25 Creedmoor content coming up, so you're going to have to wait to see how this will do with extended testing. We've got Peterson Brass the brass that we're using here that we're gonna be putting through the full test cycle. Uh, we've got other bullets, other ammunition, a lot of really good 25 Creedmoor content. What I'd like to know, now that you've seen the entire build in my initial results, is what do you think of my build? What do you think of the components and parts that I selected, the results, the initial loading, that kind of thing? I couldn't be happier. I can't wait to see how this rifle is gonna do with a variety of different loads and using the rifle for a variety of different applications. So add your comment in the comment section. We'll see you down there. Just know that there's more coming. Thank you for watching this video that completes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, Fill out the information, boom, you're getting ultimate reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.